before we get started, I know what every single one of you is thinking right now. Daniel, where's your neck? And I, my, my response is obvious, right? Mind your own business. Like the lines audiences go across sometimes. This is personal. It's literally my body. But this video today, let's go ahead and talk about one of our favorite wheelie boys. Matram Coffin, and a breakdown of Matram Coffin's top 10 moments from the Wheel of Time. Now, there will be spoilers here. I'm gonna try and keep them to like a minimal and as vague as possible while also doing the scene I'm talking about justice, but proceed at your own caution, to eats their own, hashtag not my fault if you spoil Wheel of Time for yourself. Let's just go ahead and jump into the top 10 Matram Coffin moments from the Wheel of Time. Now for my number 10 spot, I'm gonna kind of cheat a little tiny little little bit because it's not one moment, it's more Matt's relationship with a concept, an idea, explosives. <laughs> this could take up multiple spots in the list, but I figured I would just do a catch-all here and say for number 10, it's Matt's relationship with things that go whether it's throwing fireworks into a fire to scare off some dark friends or using fireworks to blow up part of the Stone of Tear. And finally, helping invent cannons, Matt's relationship with things that go is pretty intricate and intense. And I, for one, love it. I think it's so much fun. And there's nothing that's like obviously the best moment of Matt coming from any of this, but it's definitely worth a mention that Matt and things that is one of my favorite things about this character. It's a cool little evolution like mini arc that he starts with like a dumb farm kid who cuts open fireworks, which is dangerous as hell, to, you know, helping progress the weapons and mechanisms of war. Number nine is another not so traditional Matt pick. You see how I don't like to always go for the low hanging fruit here. I wanna go outside the box a little bit. And here it's actually how a character compares Matt to their own uncle. They tell a story of how a building was on fire, but their uncle kept going back into it to pull out children and others who were trapped in the building. And eventually he was succumbed to the smoke. He refused to stop looking for more people who might need rescuing. And that's really, really true to Matt's character. And it's actually kind of just like a foreshadowing for a lot of the moments that are to come for Matt in this list. Because I've been asked many times, like, what are the divining characteristics and traits of this character, that character? For me, Matt is the rambunctious gambler, loud mouth, of course, but he's also the best friend the Wheel of Time has to offer. So many of Matt's best moments are him just showing that he will go over the moon for people he cares about. And this description has just always struck me as a great moment for his character in the Wheel of Time because it's put so succinctly why we all love him so much. Number eight is one that I find really, really funny, but very few other people would mention in a list like this, but I just, I just really like this moment. And that is when we discover after a time in the Aiel Waste, there's, they're hanging out, camping, you know, it's the start of a new book, and Darkhounds attack where they're staying in one of the Aiel camps. And Matt is behind a door, butt ass naked, trying to hold it sh trying to hold it shut as Dark Hounds, one of the most, if not the most feared shadow spawn in existence, is trying to break in. And he's just naked against a door, trying to be like, oh sh <laughs> to me, that's always been like a really comedic moment, but it still manages to have high stakes. He's eventually rescued and he has slobber from a dark hound on his arm, which needs to be taken care of. It's a big deal. And this scene also goes to another level, which I actually really think it complements the comedy of this one next with the drama of what proceeds with Matt, but we're not going to get to that for spoiler reasons. But I just love that Matt is... <laughs> is literally doing like the thing where you put your foot and you stop, stop it. And on the other side of that is a walking nightmare as he hangs schlong, just desperately trying to save his own life. At number seven, we have Matt meeting up with, okay, just flat out big spoiler warning here. Just gonna put that in there. Okay, boop, stoop, done. Okay, moving on. Matt is reuniting with Egwene, Elaine, and Nynaeve for the first time after oh, 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 so long. And unbeknownst to him, Egwene has risen to the seat of the Amerlin among the rebel Aes Sedai. And Matt kicks open the door, poof, sees the three women. He's like, look, I don't know what idiot they've made take charge here and be their Amerlin, but I'm getting you all, we're getting on out and let's get on down and daddle. Not knowing that he's talking to the Amerlin of the rebels. 
Ig Egwene. It's Egwene. It's Egwene right in front of him. And he, he's kind of called her an idiot. The comedy, the build up, the payoff of this scene is magnificent. It fits him and like the perfect reunification with these friends he's made after all this time and the way it's handled, the slow realization that comes over Matt after he realizes like, oh, you weren't joking when you wore that stole when I came in here. No, you're you're actually you're actually the Omerlin and you're sitting in her chair because you are the Om Oh, oh it's just an example of Robert Jordan's humor working extraordinarily well uh, in the series, and it's one of my favorite moments for our boy, uh, pretty much for like, you know, character on character stuff. I don't know, I don't feel like, it's just a random top 10 list. Just enjoy me talking about Matt moments, can we? Number six is Matt wanting to leave a battlefield he's 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 like i'm gonna i'm gonna leave now because people are gonna start dying and i'm still just a farm boy in my own mind and to most of these other people it's a lot of aiel against a lot of aiel and some curry and, and and i'm an andoran villager so i'm just gonna gonna leave and then he keeps because his luck is like no <laughs> you have a destiny my friend <laughs> yeah, yeah you gotta come right back in here we're gonna do bad stuff he keeps running into soldiers who are about to get ambushed and he needs to go save them because he's not an awful person who's gonna go let these soldiers be ambushed so instead of leaving the battle he ends up leading the battle and stumbling upon Kuladin and killing him because that's Matt's character. <laughs> it's one of those moments that you like realize like, oh, this is how Matt's gonna operate forever probably, where he just wants to go be like, I'm gonna chill, don't need any of this dragon reborn, Talvir and stuff. I'm gonna go chill on out over here. And then as he leaves the pattern, probably in like one of its most direct, just messing with our characters we've ever gonna see in the series, just kind of grabs him by the collar and drags him back into the battle. Not just making him participate, but lead it and kill the enemy leader. Pattern sucks, man. All right, they've all been kind of funny and goofy, but now actually comes a more serious one for me. And this is when Matt reunites with the Band of the Red Hand, and this is another scene that's not from his perspective. Instead, it's how Tuan sees him and her understanding of his character changes as she watches him take charge. Because this is actually a shift that I think is really intelligently used throughout the Wheel of Time repeatedly, where we very often, of course, are sitting in our main character's perspective. But once in a blue moon within the Wheel of Time, uh, the effort is taken to actually show us how other people view these characters, because it's very easy to get lost in their own heads and just think about how they view themselves, or how these people who grow up with each other view each other, which they have a much more, you know, intimate view. But people who have only known Matt for a couple of months, they see him much differently. And seeing Tuan realize he's not just some buffoon, he's a lion. He's an extraordinary leader. And these people would all die for him, not because they fear him or out of some shallow obligation, but because they love him as a leader. The full quote is, Tuan looked at him, squatting there by the map, moving his fingers over the surface, and suddenly she saw him in a new light. A buffoon? No. A lion stuffed into a horse stall might look like a peculiar joke, but a lion on the high plains was something very different. Toy was loose on the high plains now. She felt a chill. What sort of man had she entangled herself with? After all this time, she realized she had hardly a clue. That is so Matt! Matt's brilliance of a character comes from the fact that he has like these three layers to him. There's the most prominent one, which is him as just like this jokey, like, ah ha 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 ha, like I'm Matt, I'm gonna have fun. But any reader who pays attention knows that's largely a facade. Underneath is an extraordinarily capable and knowledgeable leader and a die hard good person and friend. And that's actually where we're gonna transition into for the next one, of course. At number four, we have Matt and Boots. Matt with Boots is, ah, uh, it's, okay. This is an infamous speech from Matt. It's one of his monologues in the Wheel of Time that's just kind of like, I think it even grows outside the series. I've seen it in just lists across like the internet of like greatest fantasy monologues. It's essentially Matt explaining to Satella, hey, uh, here's why I don't like nobles. And he gives this very long monologue about the simplicity of, you know, a simple man who knows his boots versus noblemen who have like 40 pairs and all these different options of like when and where to win. It's so confusing. He's like the simple man has has just his couple of pairs at most, and he knows exactly what they're for. Meanwhile, nobles have so many boots and they're so complicated. And there's just like, when you, and it's, it, you know, it's a metaphor. 
is what Satella says until Mac goes, no, it's not. I'm being literal. <laughs> in the context of the grand series, it's like, yeah, that's Matt. You're not entirely sure if he's joking when he says it's not a metaphor or if he really believes, no, it's not a metaphor. It ends with Satella just kind of being like, you're an unconventionally wise man. And Matt knows he is. I just really love this because yes, the fans do overhype this scene a little bit, but I do think it is also a great moment of comedy, character, and wisdom uh, within the Wheel of Time where readers can actually take away what's Matt saying, they can enjoy the character moment, and blend that in all together with the humor of Matt, you know, being Matt while all of this is happening. Boots! At number three, we have the showdown with the Golom. And this one, I mean, it kind of just had to be here, right? Matt's buildup against this antagonist is so intense. Arguably one of the most terrifying of the entire Wheel of Time. I really wanted to see if the Golom, what would happen if it went up against Pot on Fane. We never get that. But we have Matt finally showing his genius once again, because remember, he's actually extremely intelligent. He just kind of like hides that under this buffoon facade. And you know, he, he's having his final like, it's you and me. And he figures out, a genius way to kill the unkillable. You can't burn a golem, you can't cut a golem, you can't crush a golem, you can't channel at a golem, you can't drown it. What can you do? You can send it in the eternity of a black void. <laughs> so Matt, after a prolonged duel with the golem, uh, finally opens a doorway behind him, one of the doorways we know that can be used for traveling, and kicks it through, wham, into falling for eternity. For ever and it can it can't be rescued because now it's just who got who knows gotten where where is it we don't even know because it's outside of space time and reality and just falling forever that is the golem's fate and it's such a clever resolution to this enemy who is shown to us again and again to just be unstoppable. I didn't think of it before I saw this scene. It's not like something that's prevalent enough in the text, these doorways that you think, oh, this is the way to go. I actually thought like, oh, get the golem halfway through a gateway and close it. Maybe that would cut it in half or maybe the weave would just shatter. We don't know and we never will because Matt came up with a more foolproof and better way. Send it outside of space and time because that's how he resolves his problems. <laughs> And at number two is another combat scene with Matt. In the first couple of books, especially if it's your first time through the series, Matt is one of the most disliked characters. He quickly turns around in book three and it has that, that turn, that twist, that turnaround has such a kickoff with this very well-known showdown between Matt and two pretentious noble boys, Gawain and Galad. Now, I actually like Galad as a character. I'm a Galad defender. I know that's not exactly the most popular thing to say, but I enjoy Galad. I think he actually practices what he preaches and what he preaches isn't horrendous. Now, Matt comes down to the warder training yard after having some of the most intense healing we see throughout the series in the Wheel of Time and challenges the two star pupils the warders are training to just fight him. Both at the same time, their swords versus his Dick staff, you know what I mean? And not only does he beat them, he demolishes them. They can't touch him. Matt single-handedly takes these two down, one of whom is arguably already on a blade master level. And despite his clear victory, of course, these two beautiful noble boys still get all the attention, but Matt gets the respect that day. And this isn't even him at full capacity. So this reintroduction, plus the voices and memories in his head, are quite the interesting restart for this character. Because yes, on just the surface level, it's an amazing scene and I bring it up all the time because it's so, 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 so much fun. Beyond that though, I actually think this was a stellar reintroduction of Matt. Because in the first couple of books, as I said, he's he has a character, he has a purpose, but he, we just don't know him as well as so many others because of all the things that are going on with him. Now, we get to re-know. Matrim Cothin and what he's going to be and become. I'm very excited to see how they handle this in the show. Uh, I really want to see Barney Harris kick some ass in a courtyard. Please, that'll be magnifique. 
That's not how you say that. Magnifique. Magnifique? Sure. And I know a lot of people are gonna want this to be number one, but I'm sorry for me, it's just not the best matte moment. It's the second best. It's extraordinary. It's so fun to read and reread. It's also cathartic to see Gawain and Galad just kind of taken down a couple pegs and, you know, underestimate our boy Matt. It's actually, I think, more enjoyable upon rereads the scene because you love Matt at that point if you're rereading the series for sure. And coming into him in this moment, you just gotta have this like, Okay, but number one, we actually need to go back to the Rebel Eyes Sedai. And if you recently watched me on the Dusty Wheel, which is a channel I highly recommend you check out, live streams about the Wheel of Time, so much fun. You know what my answer was gonna be actually coming into this video? Because again, the most important thing about Matt's character, in my opinion, is what he'll do for others around him. And he sees his childhood friend Egwene is being disrespected. Yes, she's the Omerlin seat, but she's not being taken seriously. And this enrages Matt. He hates seeing someone he knows, he loves, he trusts, not be taken seriously and being propped up almost as a puppet. So immediately, without question, he goes to Egwene, bows to her and thanks her, basically humbling himself before her and showing immense and great respect. Showing the other Aes Sedai that this seat means something, even if they did promote Egwene to it as some puppet, something to be manipulated, that's not how he's going to see it, and it's not how the dragon, the person that Matt represents on this mission, is going to treat it either. Reshifting and reframing a power dynamic, at least laying down some sparks for Egwene to light a fire with that she absolutely does, and that's not to take away credit from Egwene. No, Egwene earns her power within the Rebel Eyes to die. But just this small gesture from a friend that means so much, and he could have easily not done and ignored and kept his own ego the most important thing, absolutely not. Because he know that small gesture would have such a massive impact for Egwene and be so important to her. So the biggest thing to take away from this video is Matt has a lot of great moments. Very funny a lot of the time, but that buffoon who's holding a door shut as a dark hound comes to kill him is a surface evaluation. Underneath that you have a brilliant tactician, someone who can outthink ancient evils from the shadow, will do anything for his friends, and without question could kick your ass. And that's why I love Matt, the character Matt, and I hope the performance, the portrayal of him, really one of the heavy things I'll be judging the Wheel of Time show on, is how well they capture all those multi layers to his character. I have a lot of faith that Barney Harris is certainly gonna put in the effort. I mean, I've seen the guy in other stuff. He seems like he really has a lot of potential and I know that he's under the direction of a lot of mega fans. So guys get it right or I'll cry. Jokes, I'm sure it'll be great. Anyway guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you wanna support what I do here and have a good one y'all. Peace.